Great afternoon, family. To each and every one that's gathered, friends, loved ones, and especially to the family as we come to celebrate the life and remembrance of God's precious son, uh, Douglas King. Um, my condolences go to each and every one of you. Of course, it's never easy losing a loved one, but we have learned that even over the years, the Lord comfort those who are going through. So here we are going to join together in this wonderful memorial and celebration of life service. But firstly, we're just going to open in prayer. So if you can just kindly just bow your heads with me. Lord, Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We thank you again for this opportunity to come together as friends and family, loved ones, to remember the life of your dear son who have transitioned into your arms, Douglas King. Lord, you know what they're facing, what they've been going through, the emotions and everything included. But Lord, you promise even in your word that you said, blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted. So comfort these, your children, because you said in your word that well, those that sow in tears will weep in joy. And you have seen their tears, and you have heard their cries. And weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning, in the next season. So dear Lord, as we come together with the words of reflections and tributes, even with the scriptures and the songs, Lord, let everyone have peace, even from this day forward. We love you and we thank you, and we say amen. 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 So the first thing we're going to have here is the Old Testament reading, which will be found in the book of Psalms 90, verse 10 through 17, by Jeffrey Tony. A reading from Psalms 90, verses 10 through 17. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and of your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The word of the Lord. At this time, we're going to have the New Testament reading. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 through 58 by Lark Tony. Hello, everyone. I'm Lark Tony, and my Uncle Cover King will be giving the reading. This reading is taken from the first book of Corinthians, 15th chapter, verses 51 to 58. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death 
is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thank you for the readings. At this time, we're going to have the tributes and the reflections. Those may, that may have a memory, a special reflection, a tribute even to give if it's a poem or even a song, whichever it may be, now is the time that you can give it. Now is the time that you can present it. The mic is open for you. Uh, good day. Um, my, I am Douglas King's son. At least that is what they tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> now, me and Douglas, we, we never had a, we, we never get close, you know what I mean? Um, we never really get to share. I was hoping that maybe one day we would get to come together and talk and, but for some reason that, that never happened. No. He is my dad. And I love him. And he don't know that. He don't know I love him. He doesn't know that I love him. In fact, he thinks that I don't like him. Which is exactly what I want him to think. You know? <laughs> Look, I always had a weird sense of humor. But, <laughs> but I just want to say to each and every one of you, each and every one of you that take the time from your day, whatever it is, you take the time to be here. That says a lot. It says a lot. So on behalf of all of my family, all of my friends, all of my loved ones, I want to say to each and every one of you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. God bless. Well, thank you for your remembrance or your tribute that you have given. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you as well. Well, at this time, we're going to have the obituary reading uh, coming from Jasmine King Tony. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And these days we're hearing on the news a lot about split screens. Uh -huh. So as I follow Brian, this is the ultimate split screen. Um, and it's all in love. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Douglas Cyril King was the fourth born child of Winston and Hatanzia King, deceased, of Patton Street, St. James. He was the father of Brian, a brother, brother-in-law, uncle, and honorary grandfather. Douglas attended Mukarapu Boys RC School and the St. Crispin's Anglican School in Trinidad. He was a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service from 1959 to 1970. And I just deviate from the script momentarily. 
to talk about a couple bits of information that I received as I was doing the research on Douglas's service in the police force. Uh, in 1959, when he was in the barracks in the training center, that class of recruits stayed in the barracks for 14 months. Uh, and this happened because at the time in Trinidad there was there were labor there was labor unrest, including a telephone strike. So the general generally the time that the recruits stay in the barracks is six months, but this class was there for fourteen months. Uh, the other piece of information that I got was that at one point. Uh, Doug was the youngest police officer on the force. So I'd like to thank my brother Victor and Jerry Goodrich for those two nuggets of information. Uh, Douglas migrated to Trinidad to the United States in 1970 from Trinidad. He worked in building maintenance until 2018, when a near fatal accident left him in a coma for six weeks with injuries that included a compromised spine. Although the soles of his feet never healed completely, he made a miraculous recovery. Barely able to walk, but always determined, he made he made a determined, he made, I'm sorry, he made two solo trips to Trinidad in 2022 and 2024. This determination is the character trait that will stay with us always. As talkative and loud as he was annoying, Douglas was a caring big brother. He really thought he was funny. I have to admit that my sisters and I encouraged him. As little girls, he was our entertainment. He always had stories and sayings that were guaranteed to make us giggle. One of my favorites was asking him to tie the bows of, on the dresses with the band in the back or to tie our shoestrings. He would say, let me see, I could only tie in boy. <laughs> you know, one of us would be sure to ask him to tie a bow every time. Also, not funny in the moment, but memorable were the 6 a.m. telephone calls on birthdays. At, with the greeting, it is time to wake up, or singing happy birthday to you. I remember those wake-ups. When I moved to Washington, D.C. as an adult, Douglas was there to do things only a brother would do for you. Years later, we became business partners. Not an easy feat for siblings, but we did it. The quintessential big brother, we always benefit, we all benefited from his generosity. A huge fan of Trinidad and Tobago culture, Invader Steel Orchestra was the best band in the world, in his opinion. His band was always going to win the Panorama competition next year. This was another ongoing joke. In his younger years, when he participated in carnival, he would share many tales about activities in his band. On his vacations in Trinidad, the Patna Street household was treated to his singing. There would be one calypso or song from Sharu or Shakira that he would sing every day. That household would know 
his song of the trip very well by the time his vacation ended. On behalf of the siblings, Sally, Victor, Deborah, who are unable to be here today in person, Carver and myself, thank you Carver, acknowledge his flaws, his goodness, his humor, as we pay tribute and thank God for his life. Rest well, my brother. Thank you for the reading. We're also grateful for the life of Douglas King. It have meant much to many of you, family especially. And if I could just go off the script just for one minute, if you don't mind, just join me in this familiar song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Could you repeat the Lord's Prayer after me? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. At this time, I just want to comfort you with some words of comfort as I give this eulogy. And I've learned over the years that the best way, the best method I find comfort is in the word of the Lord. And it's a very familiar scripture, Psalms, the 23rd chapter, Psalms chapter 23. And it simply says, and you know it, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add his blessings to these words. And of course, this scripture is very familiar to me. My parents taught it to myself and my siblings in our early days. Originally, my parents are from the island of Barbados, not very far from Trinidad. Uh, and we still have a little art with Trinidad because the, the main, um, food preparation is, uh, or the main meal in Barbados, the flying fish and cuckoo and all of the flying fish now are on the Trinidadian side and Trinidad won't allow the fish to come back to Barbados. So now we got to use salmon, you know, so. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, we are grateful, wonderful things places, even in Trinidad, as I've even been there, beautiful place. But however, when they were in Barbados and they're growing up, they told us that every morning they had to learn a psalm, learn a scripture, and they had to say it before school would begin. And they continue with the same tradition when they came over and they had my siblings and I, and 
and they taught us the Psalms and specifically the one that stood with us, which is most notable, Psalms, the 23rd chapter, the Lord is my shepherd. And we are so grateful that we have someone that we could go to, that we could call a shepherd. And we have learned a shepherd is one who guide, who keeps, who loves, who share, who protects, who feed, and who take care of. And the Lord will put shepherds even in our hearts, even as we live our life. He will put people before us that will care for us, that will love us, help us manage things and put things together. So I believe the same way the Lord has given you someone special, a shepherd, a person that you can even go to, such as his precious son, their Douglas King. But however, they have to have that same nature of the Lord. The Lord is our shepherd that we will never, ever be in want. That no matter what difficulties come our way, no matter what hardship, the toils of life may come. We know that we have someone that we can go to. Even as you've spoken and you have mentioned that, well, he have been through some difficulties even in life. But with his recovery, it had to be a miracle because the Lord was on his side. And that's where it says that, well, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. You don't have to worry because we have a shepherd on our side. And then it says that, well, the enemy may come, everything will come, but you still have a table, a festival, a celebration, even in the midst of enemies. Enemies don't have to be a person. Enemy could be something that's dramatic that can occur in your life that you desire to get out of. But the Lord is saying that, well, even in the midst of it, during your life, he will prepare a table. He will prepare something great. Something awesome that you'll be able to testify and help somebody even while they're going through the same thing. So that's why we have to live our life pleasing even unto the Lord, even to help our fellow man. And it teaches us a, a song that I learned over the years. It simply says that if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living will not be in vain and definitely from even the reading are uh, there douglas king his living is not in vain with even with his entrepreneurship even with his help and assistance even with his words of advice he was a shepherd to someone he helped someone and that's why he's able to say that well listen Surely goodness and mercy had followed me all the days of my life. And he had lived a wonderful and full life that he'd be able to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So now it's your turn to leave a legacy, to shepherd someone, to take care of someone, to help someone as you pass along. Because the Lord has put into each and every one of us that gift to help, that gift to shepherd somebody. So it's now your turn to shepherd. Why? Because we have the greatest shepherd of them all, our Lord. And he's called the great shepherd of the sheep. And we are the sheep of his pastures. So as you shepherd, as you go along, you will make this journey somehow. No matter how tough and how bad, how difficult it may be, all is well and you're going to be all right in jesus precious name we say amen. amen just real quick if you can just look at someone and just challenge them and just let them know it's going to be all right just look at someone tell them it's going to be he have left some legacy with us it's going to be all right. May God bless you and strengthen you. That's all right. Give a hug if you have to. <laughs> Show that love. It's going to be all right. 
you have a shepherd. He's watching over you right now. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is well. One of the family still wish to read the acknowledgments. Hi, everyone. I am Lark Tony on behalf of the King family. Thank you for attending the memorial service in person to everyone here and everyone who is on the live stream, um, folks from the US, Canada, and Trinidad, family, friends, and neighbors. Uh, for the acknowledgments, we wanna give a special thanks to all those who've expressed condolences and shared kind memories. To his in-laws, Letitia Walters Brown and Cordell Singh, who always looked out for him when none of his siblings was within 200 miles and to Karen Dewsbury, his aide, for immeasurable uh, service over the last two years. Okay, there's a special song from the family, Abide With Me, as it played. The words are on the back of the program, where you can sing along. Sing with your hearts. <laughs>
brought nothing into this world. And it's certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For much it has pleased our Heavenly Father, and his wife provided to take unto himself our beloved Douglas King. We therefore commit his body back to its tender dust, earth to earth, Submitting his body back to the dust, he returns to the earth as it were. The spirit has gone to God who gave it. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, said the spirit, that they may rest from their labor. For their works do follow them. For them that sleep in Jesus shall God bring with him. And over such the second death has no power. And may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, our Savior, and Comforter be with all of you in your life and throughout your life everlasting. And they may the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, <coughs> make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom all be glory forever and ever. We all say amen. 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 May God bless you and strengthen you, even in this time of loss. And again, as I mentioned, you have a great shepherd that is watching over you. And he has taken his under shepherd home. Now it's your turn to be a shepherd. Appreciate family. God love you. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your family today.